Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to do is we're going to start going into building our own plugin. Now, what we're going to do for this tutorial, we're not actually going to do any sort of algorithms or anything like that. We're just going to really take a look at the default plugin code and just really kind of explore what's going on, do our first build with the plugin and um, just get some audio running straight into the plugin, straight back out of it and just basically discuss it. So what we're gonna do is start up a new project like always. Now this may be a two part project because there are some specific things that we can do with um, building with building plugins that I think that we should do for a second part uh, just to go over some of the basics. And uh, some of those things that I'm going to discuss in the second part are going to be um, downloading the VST SDK um, from Steinberg, which is what you need in order to build a VST plugin. And also um, there's there's a uh, uh, a plugin host that Juice has that uh, allows us to basically build and run the plugin within uh, within a Juice within another Juice project, but uh, there are some specific errors that. Uh, that I need to fix that um, I know how to fix them, but I just wanted to go through that with you in another one. So that's going to be kind of part two of um, audio plugin basics. So, um, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to build um, a new project and this one's going to be audio plugin. Okay. So just go ahead and click on that. I'll just call this plugin test one and we'll put this in our juice folder. Go ahead, create that. So as you can see, it creates two CPP and two header files. So you have the plugin, plugin processor and you have the plugin editor. Okay, so the difference between these two uh, these two CPP files is the, the plugin processor is your actual um, your, where you're going to actually write your DSP algorithm. So that's where you're going to write um, any sort of changes that you're going to make to your audio. Um, all of your backend kind of DSP processing is going to happen within the plugin processor. Okay, the plugin editor is the stuff that we've kind of gone over in the beginning of this tutorial series. So like UI stuff, creating sliders, creating dials, and um, working with that functionality. So think of your plugin editor as your, your, your front end, the front end of your plugin, which you're actually seeing and the functionality that um, goes along with that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go into a couple settings here that I thought may be relevant to you. Um, so if you go into exporters, okay, so I just clicked on, if you just click on this arrow here that says exporters, and you go into uh, your Xcode here. So let me see, let me make sure I'm in my right folder here. It's not this one. There are quite a few different menus here. So, um, so you know, bear with me, <laughs> basically. Um, so you can call, so, so this is kind of where you edit your, your plugin name. So if you want to call your plugin something else, uh, you, can, you can do that here in uh, binary name, okay? Um, one thing that's quite important here is your binary location. So this is where, if you if you actually build your uh, your plugin, this is the location of where it'll actually be built at. If you want to go ahead and take a look at it, and or if you want to open it up in your DAW, which we'll do in in just a moment. Okay, just uh, just a quick thing that just kind of confused me for a moment was that um, I looked in my libraries folder where I, where I, so normally I have all my plugins kind of in my um, just in my library in my normal plugins folder where everybody stores it their their plugins. And, um, and I noticed that it wasn't there and I was searching and I was searching. Um, so this is actually like in your user's library folder, not your kind of global library folder, just in case you're looking in there and you're saying, oh, I don't know where my plugin is. Okay. Um, also you have OSX architecture. Okay. I haven't messed with these, but, um, but you may need to actually take a look at these. Okay. So, uh, for, for like, if you're running on a different system. Okay. So, if I like, I might select that I want um, a 3264 bit plugin, but um, depending on your machine, you may have to look 
at this and also um, at your deployment target I think the default is 10.9 so um, so that's just something to be aware of if you're having problems with um, with actually getting your plugin to run uh, on your machine take a look at those settings um, that are that are here under exporters okay another thing I'm going to point out that's kind of off the subject but um, something that that kind of came up in an issue and in a comment so if you go under modules sometimes when you download a project from a different a different source you open it up and you say and basically the search paths aren't working properly um, what you can do is you can just click on this little settings icon here um, <clears throat> And then what you, what you can do instead of so like before I was going into and I and I'd press uh, so so basically like if it can't find your modules then uh, you may have a problem where you have to set the paths again um, which is a problem that I have whenever I download something from uh, the internet or from the Juice Tutorial website so what you can do is if you click on the basics basically what you would do here is you would set like your path for your modules if you can't find where your modules are um, for some reason it's not working that's because that's because mine's uh, that's because my my uh, path is set correctly but if it but if it's but rather than having to go in here and cut and paste for like every one of these if like having to reset the path for every one of these if it's lost you can actually go in here and um, you can do uh, set set paths for all modules and then what that'll do is basically you would just set it once and then it'll actually copy it for all the other modules so you don't have to go in and manually cut and paste it okay just a little thing so let's go ahead and uh open up an xcode let's see what we got Okay, so here we are in our plugin plugin test. As I said, uh, just to repeat, plugin processor is where all of our DSP algorithm will be written, all of the backend stuff, all of the actual mathematical functionality. Plugin editor .cpp is where all of your UI stuff will go, all of your sliders and dials, and what you actually see and the functionality that's involved with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at plugin processor. Oh, there's another thing. I'm sorry, I keep on forgetting stuff. Uh, if we go back in here, let me see if I can find it. Um, I know I'm, I feel like I'm gonna get lost and get tangled up here. There's there's actually a place where yeah, here it is. So um. So if you go into your actual settings under plugin test one, okay? So if you wanted MIDI input, MIDI output, so so the first plugin that we're gonna do is just gonna be like a gain slider um, that's, that's just gonna take audio, um, audio input, and then just put it out and you can turn the volume down and turn it back up. So that's what we're gonna do for our first plugin uh, in the future. But uh, if you wanted one that did MIDI input and MIDI output, if you go into your, your settings here under the producer, this is where you would, this is where you would um, set that. Okay, so if it's a synthesizer, you would just have that, has MIDI input, has MIDI output, um, you know, so on and so forth. You can just check these and then it automatically puts the appropriate code in your thing. Okay. Um, oh, and here's, here's, I'm sorry, I made a mistake earlier. This is where you actually set your plugin name and, um, and your company. Uh, if you want to change you know, the name of your company, you would, uh, you would just change that there. I'll just leave that there for now. Cause I don't want to mess things up. Okay. So, so here we are in our uh, plugin processor.cpp. So I'm just going to go through a couple of the ones that are kind of relevant to us now and those would be um, you have prepare to play okay I'll just go through this very quickly prepare to play is when you have um, when you when you actually press play in your DAW like Ableton or Logic um, so this would be like any sort of initialization that needs to happen um, when you know, when you're playing, like if it needs to, I don't know, declare any sort of variables, basically, that would happen, that would happen here in prepare to play. Okay. Um, 
then here's where's our process block okay so we have process block um, and then the process block is where all of our DSP algorithm all of our mathematics basically goes okay so um, so basically you have just like we talked about with the audio uh, audio output component audio output component do I got that right um, audio app component that's what it is um, so so it's basically the same thing as the audio app component okay so we have uh, just a buffer that's basically taken in um, any signal that we're putting into it also if we had if we were doing MIDI any sort of MIDI messages so it's a MIDI message buffer okay and um, and then so the basic so, so the basic idea is that we're just going to take we're just going to take in these samples if we're taking in samples if it's an effect plugin we're going to do some mathematics here and then we're going to output it out to um, uh, then we're going to output it back out after we do some sort of processing with it okay so we just have it the sound coming in and the sound going back out and in between we're going to have some sort of um, some sort of difference equation, some sort of transfer function, something that is basically going to define what what the plugin is going to be. Okay, so so that's so that's where the meat of everything that's going to happen is going to be is in process block. Okay, then down here you have uh, get state information, set state information. So this would be uh, something that we'll probably go through down the line. This would be like um, if you want your plugin to save in a certain state, I, I guess if you want like if you if you have like presets that you want to save, or um, if you want to do some sort of recall on your plugin settings, this is where all of that would happen. Okay. Then if we go to our plugin edit editor .cpp, okay, this will look familiar if you've gone through my uh, my UI document window. Uh, tutorials um, where we have the paint function and the resize function and the set size of the uh, of the actual window so you can see that this is just um, just a hello world uh, that's happening on the um, just on the regular background color so so there's no there's no actual dials or anything in here we'll go we'll go through that down the line and we'll actually make dials and create the functionality behind that okay so what we're going to do is we're actually going to build we're just going to make sure that everything's running fine which i think is a good step to start out with okay um so what we can do is up here at the top left where we have plugin test dash all we're just going to actually create the plugin um open it up in ableton and just pass audio through it and just make sure that audio is coming out of it so basically what we're getting in the numbers so so remember at the end of the day all we're dealing with is numbers that are are going into it so we're passing we're passing that sound stream in and then we just want to make sure that that same sound stream is coming back out um unaffected okay so so if you go up here to plug in test dash all and then just click on that and what we're going to do um oh it looks like i can build it as a vst didn't know that um so i'm just going to build it as an au plug in an au component okay because i use ableton this would work for logic as well um and then if i just build that so i'll just build it and this will take a minute By the way, if you have any questions or comments or anything, um, just let me know. Okay, some people have come up. Uh, I, I would read through the comments of the past tutorials as well because those have been helpful. Uh, the, the, there, there have been actually people that have been watching that have been pointing out stuff that I wasn't aware of as well. Um, so read through the comments and stuff. There's some, there's some interesting input on there. Okay, cool. So that succeeded. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up Ableton now. It's opening in my on my other uh, window, I, which I can't show you, um, but I'm, I'll drag it over as soon as it opens. In the meantime, I'll, I'll, I'll actually show you where this is actually built. So once I hit the build and it was an AU component, if we go to 
um, the just my hard drive. It's under the user. It's actually under the users um, library. And then audio. Then plugins. And then components. And there it is. Plugin test one dot component. Okay, so you can actually change. You can actually change this in the settings if you want. The in the settings of the producer. Cool. So Ableton's open now. So um, so what I'll do is I'll just create an audio track here. Okay, and then. If I go into plugins and then I go into my audio units, okay, remember we just set it to your company and then I have plugin test one. So if I load that, I think that's so cool when, when you just, you know, like it's like you have something that that's your own plugin. I think that's pretty cool. Um, even though it's not doing anything yet. And then we just opened it up. There's our UI, it says hello world. Okay, now let's just confirm that it's actually working. Uh, let me find a loop. Loop. Uh, I feel like I want to play something really cool rather than just. Uh, all right, cool. So, so as you can see, it's taking the audio in and it's actually just putting the same out, audio out. So that just confirms that our plugin is actually, that our plugin is actually working. Okay. So, um, so that's it for, that's it for this tutorial. So I just wanted to go through some of the basics, kind of like, you know, if you're going to build a plugin, these are the very, very basics of the stuff that you need to know how to do. Um, so for the next, for, so for the next one, uh, I'm not sure if we need to actually download this, the Steinberg VST, um, software development kit, but, uh, I'm going to have a look into that, see if we need to actually download it. But, uh, the other thing that I wanted to do was, uh, juice actually has a, um, they, it actually has a plugin host. So, uh, so you don't have to actually open up uh, Ableton or Logic or anything to, uh, to actually rug in, run your plugin through. Um, it has its own kind of host, but there was a, uh, there was like kind of a, a specific issue that we need to um, go in and have a look at. And so for the next tutorial, I'll actually go in, have a look at that issue with you guys, and then, um, you know, just discuss how to fix it. Okay, so if you have any questions, just uh, drop me a comment below or a message, and I will see you next time.